Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Eldritch Horror. Yes, this game, it's an older one, but I love it. Now, I don't have everything quite yet for this game. It is coming. I will soon have everything. Right now, we're going to be playing with the base game, the Mountain of Madness, and all four of the small boxes. That's it. I don't have the other three big boxes. They're on the way. Uh, so that's what we're playing with here. We're going to do a one-off scenario. If you happen to be watching my Arkham Horror, the card game playthrough, we're using Ursula and Lily over there. And then we're going to play with one other, Agnes, uh, just because I like playing with at least three, sometimes four, but I feel like four is exhausting recording. So we're going to play with three investigators for this. I already have a playthrough of this game on the channel, so I'm not going to do a full setup video. I am going to put a link in the description below. RTFM has the best learn to play on this game I have ever seen. I'll put a link there. You can see how to set up the game and he'll talk about how to play it. Uh, super helpful and it's a hilarious video. I, I definitely recommend checking that out. Here we're going to look at the two prelude cards I have chosen to use for this play. And then we'll meet our investigators as we start our playthrough. So without further ado, let's jump in. But I do want to mention, don't forget to turn on those Klingon subtitles. I am very likely going to make mistakes. This is a long game. It's a lot to record. So if I do make some mistakes and I miss it in editing, I will put Klingon subtitles out for those mistakes. So turn that on. All right, let's jump in. Currently, Ursula and Lily are in the midst of the Edge of the Earth campaign in Antarctica. So I felt like I had to choose Ithaqua just so we can fight some sort of elder one from the Antarctic. <laughs> so over here we have the cultist ability if we draw the cultist monsters. Up here we can see how much doom we have before we will flip to where he is awakened. So right now it's going to be at 13. I'll show you where that is in a second. We have some setup rules. Set aside a Gnaklip monster and one Wendigo monster and all Ithaqua special encounters. Over here we have how we're setting up the Mythos deck. What I decided to do for this one, I'm doing all easy ones for stage one. So the first four are all snowflake ones. I'm going to do regular ones for stage two and all hard ones for stage three. I heard it's a nice way to um, ramp up the difficulty as the game plays. The weather has grown cold and the Aurora Borealis glows bright in the northern skies, visible even during the day. A strange madness has begun affecting those around the Arctic Circle, and travelers returning from the north speak of visions of an ancient civilization. So we have here, every time we see that symbol, we're going to activate all of those symbols uh, accordingly. They're called reckoning symbols, and for Athaquas, each investigator gains a hypothermia condition unless they spend a focus. Focus is something that you can take in action and actually gain one, and you can use it to reroll a single die, which is super helpful, but we might also want to gain it for this specific effect. We have right here, when three mysteries have been solved, we win the game. If Athaqua awakens, that means the doom counter goes all the way to zero. Flip this sheet and resolve the Athaqua awakens effect on the back. Here we have the two prelude cards I chose. You normally will only play with one, but I wanted to play with the sideboard for Antarctica and the City of Ruin just looks awesome where certain cities get devastated. I know, is that awesome? <laughs> what does that say about me? We won't go there. So well, let's read both of these and then we will continue with setting up our specific scenario. An expedition to Antarctica has unveiled a startling secret. Though only one man returned, he spoke of a lost city frozen in the mountains. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> Most of his rantings were gibberish, but it was clear that he believed that something in the city would bring the downfall of mankind. Given all the horrors you've seen, you hesitate to dismiss these fears outright. You find yourself preparing for a journey to the frozen south. During setup, which is now, uh, we'll set up the Antarctic sideboard. I have that out. After resolving setup, if Rise of the Elder Things is the Ancient One, it's not. So we'll skip that. It says, if Rise of the Elder Thing is not the Ancient One, set aside an Antarctica Adventures and draw a random Antarctic One Adventure card. We'll do that in a second. Then the lead investigator may move to the space containing the Adventure Token or to the Mis Miskatonic Outpost. Here we have our random Antarctica One card, Gathering Provisions. You personally verify the contents of each crate. Once your journey begins, a single mistake in your preparations could spell the difference between life and death. When this card enters play, place an adventure token on Sydney. When this adventure is completed, retreat Doom by 1, then draw a random Antarctica 2 adventure. 
When an investigator on Sydney performs an acquire assets action, he, they may spend two successes to gather the necessary supplies. If he does, then they gain a provisions a unique asset. When an investigator moves to the Miskatonic outpost, they may discard one provisions unique asset to complete this adventure. Sydney is over here. I'm going to use this token. Technically, it's not the right one, but it'll just help me remember that, that it relates to the adventure that we're going on. And I do want to mention this adventure, we don't need to complete it to win the game. All we have to do is complete three of the mysteries. It just provides us with other ways that we can do actions during the game and progress that story if we'd like. Our lead investigator will be Ursula. We have our expedition marker here in the pyramids, so she will go ahead and move there so she can start there. We know that because the top card of our expedition deck has the pyramids on it, so that sh shows us where we can do an expedition. Just so you can see, this is the Antarctica sideboard. You can see there's a local path to get you to the Miskatonic outpost. We could technically have started here, but I'd like to check out the pyramids first because she's also looking at doing some things in the wilderness right away, and that allows her to do that. While we're planning on going to Antarctica, we also have an apocalypse coming. Anxiously, you study the walls of your apartment. Hundreds of newspaper clippings surround a heavily marked calendar, multicolored threads connecting each article to a corresponding date. 22 years have passed since the last occurrence. 22 years and 9 months. This is going to be the big one. You can feel it in your gut. The world is not prepared. After resolving setup, if Shuttle Med is not the Ancient One, it's not Place one Eldritch token on each of the spaces 2, 5, 8, and 11 of the Doom, Doom track. If Shuttle M. Adele is the... Okay, we can skip that. Then the lead invest investigator can either discard one gate on a space of their choice or each investigator gains one talent condition. I decided to go with the talent condition, so our gate that you start the game out with a gate and a monster is still out on the board, and I'll show you that in a second. During the game, if Shuttle Med is not the Ancient One, when Doom advances to a space containing the Eldritch Token, draw and resolve a disaster, then discard that Eldritch Token. And yeah, those disasters can destroy cities, they can... I actually don't really know, just lots of bad things, and it's completely random, and I love it. If you're going to play this game, you better be okay with random, and you better be okay with dying. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Just so you can see on the top of the board, this is where Doom is starting is at 13. And we've got our Eldritch tokens here to remind ourselves to draw those disasters when Doom hits those spots. I do want to show you our icon reference card here. This shows for the number of investigators we're playing with three. So that means we initially start with two clues. We start out with one gate. And whenever we have a monster surge, we can have two monsters coming out. We currently have one clue over here in the ocean, and you can see when I drew them, I looked at the backside, and you can see it says number eight, so that showed me where it spawns. And the other one just happened to be in Shanghai here with Lily. Eldritch Horror is played over three phases, an action phase, an encounter phase, and then a mythos phase on this side. So the action phase is what we'll start with. You have uh, each action can be formed only once per round. And that also includes if you have actions on your cards themselves. So you can travel, move to one space, and then spend travel tickets to move additional spaces. You can prepare for travel, gain one travel ticket, but you have to have a road or a ship lane coming out of your location to get that specific type of ticket. You can acquire assets, but you can only do that if you're in a city space. You can rest as long as there's no monsters there to recover one health and one sanity. You can simply do a focus. That's gaining one of those focus tokens. You can trade with someone in your space, and then, of course, if you have any component actions. Then you'll have encounters, either a location encounter, a token encounter, or a combat encounter if there's an enemy there. And then we'll draw one of the Mythos cards, which, by the way, is one of the ways you can lose the game. If the Mythos deck runs out and you need to draw one, you're going to lose the game. You also have a lose condition on the back side of the Elder One's card. It'll show you how. When playing with the City of Ruin, you can also lose the game if all nine cities have been destroyed. With that then, let's go ahead and start off with our lead investigator, Ursula. Here we have Ursula's player board. So she has an action. You can move one space along an uncharted path, then perform one additional action, aka she can get a free move through an uncharted path. Kind of cool. 
Also, once per round, you or another investigator on your space may spend one less focus to pay for an effect. That includes using focus itself to let you reroll. So she essentially can get one free reroll or let another investigator in her space get a free reroll by spending nothing as if it's a focus. She has six health, six sanity. Her starting ability is she can go ahead and upgrade one of her skills. And of course, in this game, that's called improve. So she's going to improve her influence because she'd like to be able to get assets and that can be super helpful. So she's a three lore, three uh, influence, three observation, three strength, and two will. She also starts with a mineralogy research. So after resolving a general encounter or an expedition encounter on a wilderness space, and that's what I'm hoping to do this time. That's why I'm in the spot that I'm at. You may examine the area's soil so we can test our observation. If we at least get one success, which is a five or six, if you pass, gain two clues and discard this card. Wow, that's amazing. Also, her talent is evasive. So during the encounter phase, you may test your observation again. Gosh, maybe I should have pumped up the observation. If you pass, you may choose an encounter as if there are no monsters on your space, then flip this card. So usually when there are monsters in a space, you can't encounter that space. Uh, you have to do combat encounters instead. And if you don't defeat all the enemies, then you don't get to actually do that location's encounter. This allows us to circumvent that. Because I'm at the location that I'd like to be, the pyramids, my first action will be to simply focus. I'm going to grab one of those focus tokens. I believe the max you can have of these is two. Just like the ship and railroad tickets, the max amount we can have is two. That is the second action I'm going to do is grab a ship ticket. I can do that because there's a ship lane connected to the pyramids. There's also a railroad, so I could have done either one, but I'm thinking of maybe going to Antarctica soon after doing this. And that is something I do want to mention. Antarctica is here. When you're here, you can use a local path to go to the Miskatonic outpost. That movement is actually free. It does not cost a movement to move from Antarctica to the Miskatonic Outpost, and that's what's on that sideboard. I love the sideboards in this game. It's super fun. One of these days, I'm going to play with all of the sideboards, and it's just going to be insane. <laughs> Before we meet Lily, why don't I go ahead and tell you what our mystery is that we need to solve? <laughs> I cannot believe I hadn't even flipped that. Okay, we have the Gauntlet Attack. Not content to let weather cause havoc, Ithaqua has unleashed his terrifying minions upon the frozen cities of the world. The Ganakkek attack with a bestial fury, sowing chaos wherever they appear. As an encounter, an investigator on a city space containing a clue must confront the Ganakkle that threatens civilization. A Ganakkle monster ambushes him or her. Uh, if she defeats it, place the clue on this card. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are clues on this card equal to half, and because I'm playing with three, it's always rounded up, so it will be two. When there's two clues on here, I solve this mystery. I'm just going to call out it's very important that you reveal those mysteries before you start making decisions, because boy, does that change what I was going to do with Lily. <laughs> so it's a good thing I uh, read that before we kept going. Okay, here we have Lily. Lily is uh, six health, six sanity. You can see her stats here, strongest and strength. Uh, and her will is actually not terrible. She has an action. You can spend any number of health or sanity, then recover the equal amount of health or sanity. So she takes a lot of sanity damage. We can actually even it out between health and damage. Kind of cool, actually. When you improve a skill, you may immediately improve that skill a second time. So when we improve, that's like what Ursula did, where she got plus one to her um, influence. If we do that for Lily, she'll actually do that twice, and she'll get a plus two. That is sweet. She has a lucky rabbit's foot. Once per round, you may reroll one die when resolving a test. She has martial prowess. When resolving a combat encounter, you may gain plus three during that encounter if you do flip this before resolving that test. Oh, I forgot that she has that. She might be able to take, off a, uh, take out a Ganoff Ket, adding plus three to her strength. And then she has a protective amulet. Gain plus one will during combat encounters. So she's a lot less likely to take sanity damage because she'll actually roll four dice. Looking for as many successes as she needs to cancel that sanity damage when having that combat. Before revealing that mystery card, I was thinking of just staying here to try and collect the clue in Shanghai. But this is a city space and we have a clue here. So if I stay here, I have to have that combat encounter from how I understand it. I could run away. I was thinking of run away, running away until I realized I have plus three for that first combat because of her martial prowess, that talent. 
So I think I'm going to stay there. And that would, if I can defeat that enemy, that would be halfway through already our first mystery. So I think for our first action, then we'll just gain a focus token. Uh, that way we can use additional rerolls for combat. And then our second action we're going to do is try and acquire some assets because we're in a city. In order to do this, though, we need to test our influence and try and get as many successes as we can. We're rolling two dice. Any fives and sixes are successes. We'll give our dice a roll and we have no successes. <laughs> Bummer. We currently have four assets that are available for us to purchase. However, I have no successes, but I do have a bank loan and Lily is ready to take a bank loan. The bank loan states, when performing an acquire assets action, you may gain a debt condition to immediately add two successes to your test result. Now, there's this huge stack of condition cards, and what you're supposed to do is draw from the bottom until you find one that matches the condition you're going to gain. We're gaining the debt condition, so I'll just keep drawing from the bottom until I find that. Here is the debt condition that I found. It has a local action that we can test influence. If you pass, you can discard this. But when uh, the reckoning symbol shows up, it says, some men have come to collect your debt. Flip this card. Yeah, maybe that's not going to be good. But hopefully we can pay that off. This does mean we have two successes we can use. And I'm going to grab this fishing net. It says you may reroll one die when resolving a strength test during a combat encounter. Because I already am going to use something that's giving me plus three strength, I can't use another item. So I wasn't looking for an item that gave me more strength, but... Any that give you rerolls, you can combine all of those together to get as many rerolls as you want. So I definitely want that. And it says here, reduce the damage the monster you encounter by one to a minimum of one. So it's a lot less likely to actually hurt you. So she gains that and will replenish that with what is this? Esteemed author. Our third and final investigator, we have Agnes. Agnes, you can see, has great lore and pretty terrible strength and will. <laughs> she has an action. She can test her lore minus one, which would be three. If you pass, gain a spell. You may spend one health to roll two additional dice when resolving any sort of lore test as part of a spell effect. Kind of cool. Seven health, five sanity. She has headstrong. Once per round, when you would lose sanity, you may test your willpower. If you pass, prevent that loss by up to two sanity, but then flip the card. I have no idea what's on the other side. She starts with a spell. This is the Storm of Spirits. When resolving a combat encounter, you may resolve a lore test in place of the strength test using the same uh, test modifier if you do flip the card. And then she has a profane tome. You may uh, reroll one die when resolving a will test during a combat encounter. What I'm thinking of doing here is doing this action on her player mat first. We are going to test lore minus one, so we'll roll three dice. We just need one success to gain a spell. Three dice, looking for fives or sixes. Boy, that's two. We're good. We've learned the Mind's Eye spell. You may reroll one die when resolving an influence or a will test. But every time that reckoning shows up, we have to test our lore and then flip this card, which of course we could actually spend a health to roll six dice for that. <laughs> Agnes is over here in London, and if she does an, an encounter for a city space here in London, she's likely to find something that will spawn some clues, so I'm all for that. I think what I'll do for my second action is simply get a ship ticket, because our next turn then, we can move once to Arkham, Arkham use that ship ticket to get to this uh, clue token, and what clue tokens can do for you in this game is it gives you more rerolls, which is great. But then sometimes mystery cards you actually need to complete or get those clues. So I just don't see it being a bad thing that she'd get clues. <laughs> all right. So now we've all three done our actions. We now all three will do our encounter phase. Ursula will start us off with an expedition encounter. After that, we'll move that expedition marker to the next card on top of this deck. And this appears to be Rome. So we'll move this over here from the pyramids to Rome. Once you reach Dasher, you begin digging through the rubble that had once been the White Pyramid, hoping to excavate the ancient burial chambers. So this is a strength minus one check. Her strength is three, so she'll be rolling two dice. We'll roll our two dice. We've got a five. That's a success. You uncover a vast labyrinth of underground tunnels. Your only hope of navigating is to translate the hieroglyphs on the wall. We would have to do a lore test. We have three for that. If you pass, you find your way to the royal treasury. Gain one artifact. If you fail, slowly find your way back to the exit. You become delayed. We would lay down on our side, and we have to spend one action to stand back up. Three dice for this test, and we've got a five. Beautiful. We get an artifact. 
we'll draw one artifact, and we have the Garin Fragments. As part of a travel action, you may spend one health to move one additional spa space along the path. Ooh, she could be amazingly fast with that. We now have just resolved a expedition encounter on a wilderness space, so let's go ahead and test that soil in the pyramids. Totally thematic. Uh, we will use observation, which is three. If you pass, gain two clues and discard this card. We'll roll our dice up, and we do have a, su a success. So we'll discard that and gain two clues. We'll have Lily complete her encounter next. She is currently at a city space containing a clue. So that means we will fight this Gnaf Ke. Okay, first time seeing what it is. Okay, this doesn't look terrible. Uh, this doesn't look terrible either, actually. Oh man, it's strength minus two though, and is a total of three health. We don't have to worry about the spawning here. We're being ambushed, and then we will quote unquote discard this one. We'll just set it aside, and then anytime we try and do this, we'll have to fight this same monster. The first thing we'll need to do is resolve a will test. This monster's horror is one, so that means we need at least one success to not lose any sanity. Lily's will is currently three, and we have this amulet that gives us plus one during those combat encounters for will. So we're rolling four dice for this. We need one, five, or six. We've got two sixes. We're good. We now have to do the strength test, and we're going to do strength minus two. Normally, that would be for us only two dice. I do want to mention, let's say our strength was only one or two and we were doing this, you'll always still roll one die. But then what we'll do is we'll compare the amount of successes we have to how much damage this enemy does. If we have two or more successes, this enemy will not deal any damage to us. Conversely, though, if let's say we had one or no successes, this monster would deal us two damage. Then we would deal damage to this enemy equal to the amount of successes we have, and this has three health. In order to complete this mystery, we have to defeat two of these, and we have to do three points of damage at one go on it because we're ambushed, and that uh, health doesn't, or damage, I should say, doesn't uh, carry over. So we really want three successes here. If we get three successes, we'll take no damage from it, and we'll take it out. We have our martial prowess that we're going to use. So right now we're rolling two dice. This will add three, so we're rolling five dice. However, we're going to have to flip this card before resolving the test. We'll see what that says in a second. And then here we have you may re-roll re one die when resolving a strength test. So we're going to flip this over. I have no idea what it's going to do. It says you may spend one health to gain plus five during this encounter instead. After resolving the test, resolve the effect based on your test results. What the heck? Let's do it. We're going to spend one health. That's going to put us only to five health instead of six. But now we're adding plus five to this instead of only plus three. So five plus two is seven with one additional reroll. We have four dice here. We only have one success. One, two, three, four, and we get three more. Five, six, seven. So I had one success here. Oh boy, none of those succeed. We get one free reroll. Let's reroll this one. That's a success. And then I do have once per round when you may reroll one die when resolving a test. So we'll reroll this die and we get a five. <gasps> Okay, that's our three successes that we need to take out the enemy. We also have your combination of strength and focus is unparalleled. No additional effect happens. We could have potentially taken an injury or something else could have happened. So let's go ahead and flip this back. That means every time we use that, though, we're going to have that choice. I love that. I have no idea what's on the backside of these cards. That's what's so cool. This also means we can place one clue on this card and we're halfway done with it. Finally, we have Agnes. We're going to flip for a London encounter. You try to schedule a meeting with Dr. G. Hogarth, president of Royal Geographical Society, testing our influence. If you pass, the distinguished explorer shares his fascinating tale spawn two clues. If you fail, he doesn't understand the significance of your recent find, advance doom by one. <laughs> All right, rolling three dice. I have no re-rolls for this, so it'll be what it will be. We'll roll, we got a five, so we'll spawn two clues. I do have this really fun clue cup here. It's got our logo on it, the One Stop Co-op Shop logo. So I'm just going to randomly draw two clues, and these are the two locations. We have the Plateau of Lang and Buenos Aires. The Plateau of Lang is actually in Antarctica, and Buenos Aires is a city, and we now have a clue there. So if we can go there and fight that other monster, we're already going to be one-third of the way done with the game. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of far away from us. As you can see, we're in London, the Pyramids, and Shanghai, so not super close together. 
Now we're going to move to the Mythos phase. We'll draw that top Mythos card, and you'll see I have the Frost cards at the beginning. The first four will be the easier ones. So the first thing we're going to do are the three symbols up top. The first symbol means we need to advance the Omen. So we're going to advance it by a clockwise by one, then advance Doom by one for each gate on the game board that corresponds to the current Omen. We'll move the Omen Tracker one clockwise, and then we can see here that the only gate we have is in San Francisco, and it's green. So no advancement of Doom, which is kind of nice. Next, though, we have the Reckoning symbol, which is a bummer. <laughs> I was hoping that wouldn't happen so quickly, but we'll have to resolve all the Reckoning symbols on all the different components on the board. You need to resolve the Reckoning symbols in a specific order. You first start with any monsters, then the Ancient One, then Mythos cards, then possessions and conditions. Well, we don't have any monsters with one out because we only have one monster out right now. The ancient one we do have. Each investigator gains a hypothermia condition unless he or she spends one focus. Well, we'll have Ursula spend her uh, focus that she doesn't have to discard because of her ability. We will have Lily discard the focus that she gained. But unfortunately, Agnes does not have one, so she gains hypothermia. Her hypothermia card states, when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover health. Roll one die on a four, five, or six, discard this card. If you gain another hypothermia condition, flip this card. Lily unfortunately has a debt to be paid. Some men have come to collect on your debt. Flip this card. So we're going to flip it. It says, we've already taken care of your debts. Now we need something from you. The man grins and hands you a manila folder with your instructions. We trust you'll hold up your side of the deal. Gain an agreement condition and then discard this card. Oh, that is so cool. Here we have our agreement condition. We have a local action. Test influence minus one. If you pass, you may spend two clues to discard this card. Wow, that's incredibly expensive. Every time we have the reckoning symbol, roll one die on a one or two. The time has come for you to pay your dues. Flip this card. <gasps> I love this game. Finally, we have Mind's Eye for Agnes. We need to test our lore and then flip this card. Our lore is four. There's no way I'm spending health to roll two more dice because with hypothermia, I can't rest to get that health back. So let's roll. Oh, wow. One, two, three total successes. We'll flip the card and we have with three successes, two plus. Memories come together to reveal an occult secret. Gain a clue. Then flip this card. Cool. We'll flip that back. Finally, we are going to spawn a gate. We look here, we'll spawn a single gate. Every gate you spawn, you immediately will draw a monster. We have our monster cup right over here. So we'll randomly shuffle these up <laughs> and grab a monster. And we have, ooh, what is this called? A star vampire. You'll want to flip this over. Whenever you see that green symbol, it'll tell you where to spawn it. When this monster is spawned, advance the omen by one unless investigators use a, as a group spend two clues. As much as I don't love advancing the omen, we didn't hit doom last time, so I think maybe I'll soak that and not worry about spending the two clues. However, we do need to spawn another gate, and this one also is going to be green in Istanbul. Istanbul is right over here, and advancing the omen really isn't bad because we don't have any red gates. We have two green. So when we get back up to this one, that's not going to be good. <laughs> we might need to work on trying to close one of those gates or just deal with the doom at that point. You had lost contact with a friend some time ago and have tracked the worshippers of some dark god to a run-down hotel. As you suspected, you find your companion bound and gagged inside. So we have the lead investigator gains one character unique asset, a positive mythos card. I know. <laughs> you won't see many of them, but we'll take it. We found Anna Tilton. I'm sure we've gone on many expeditions with her in the past. Glad that we found her. Ursula's pretty happy. When you gain this card from the deck, improve your lore. So we now have a plus one to our lore. You and other investigators on your space roll one additional die when resolving tests during research encounters. Cool. That was one round of Eldritch Horror. Gosh, I'm having so much fun already. Are you still with me? If you are, you're awesome. You know that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the next turn. And like I said, this won't be short, but it's going to be fun. We'll start the next round with Ursula again. She'll use her action where she can move through one uncharted path and then still have her two actions. Her then first action will be to travel here. She will then spend her ship ticket so she can move to this spot. She'll then use her Garni fragments as part of your travel action. You may spend one health, so she's down to five health. 
but she can move one space along any path, including the railroad. She has now met up with Lily. I looked this up because I wasn't sure, but when it says local action, anyone can take that action, including another investigator. So although Lily got this agreement, Lily goes, hey, Ursula, I have no idea what the heck this is. And Ursula says, you know what? I got it. My influence is three because we have improved it once. So I'll roll two dice if you pass uh, you, and I'm assuming that's Ursula, can spend two clues because she's the one doing the action to discard this card. So that's what we're going to try and do to get rid of this because we do not want Lily having this agreement to deal with. We'll roll our two dice. We've got a six, so we're good. We took care of that agreement. We'll discard that, and I will never get to know what's on the backside of it. I'm okay with that. Lily would like to get to Buenos Aires to take out that second monster so we can move along on our uh, mysteries but it's going to take her a little bit. So she is, for her first action, going to claim a ship ticket. And then the second action, hmm, you know what? I was thinking of just getting a focus token, but let's be a little risky. Instead of that, let's move to Tokyo because we could potentially defeat a monster there, and that sounds cool. Agnes will use her first action to try and gain another spell. Why not? Uh, we're doing lore minus one, and I rolled three dice, and we have a six, so we gain another spell. We found Conjuration. This gives us a test where we can test our lore plus one, which is five. If you pass, you may gain one item or trinket asset from the reserve with value equal to or less than your test result. Then flip this card. Oh, cool. I'm realizing I didn't mention this specifically, but Ursula discarded the two clues that she had. Now these will go into a discarded pool. If ever all the clues from my cup have been used, I'll take all those discarded clues and put them back in there. Agnes will then use a ship ticket for her second action so she can move once to Arkham and then move over here to where we have a clue. We've all completed our actions. Let's start with Ursula. We're going to do an encounter for Shanghai. A man with a loudly ticking watch offers to help you in exchange for spying on the Communist Party. You may gain a dark packed condition to improve one skill of your choice. If you do not gain the condition, the well-dressed man warns you that he's always watching. Gain a paranoia condition. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's do the dark pact. We're just going to improve all of our skills. Why don't we go for observation? Because we've got things with observation. So that means we'll be four lore, three, or we could do influence again and make influence four. You know what? I'm going to actually improve influence. So I'm a four lore, four influence. <laughs> That's awesome, but I do gain a dark pack or a dark pact condition. Our dark pact is whenever we see that reckoning symbol, we roll one die on a one. It's time to fulfill your part of the bargain, and no way to get rid of it. So we're just gonna have it. <laughs> oh boy! Lily will encounter Tokyo. Yoshiko Kawashima offers you her help. Gain one random service asset from the deck. In return, you tell her your story. Uh, we have to do an influence minus one. If you pass, she fights for you. One monster of your choice loses three health. If you fail, uh, she alerts the police. Gain one pursuit condition. Okay, so gain one random service asset from the deck. Let's do that first. Yoshika provided us a mission briefing. We'll gain two task unique assets, then discard one of them and this card. So we have purifying the world and enlist the masses. When you defeat a non-epic monster during a combat encounter, place that monster on this card. Then you may flip this card. Oh, that seems to fit Lily pretty well. This one is when you perform a rest action, you may attempt to gather the people to your cause. Influence? Ugh. If you pass, place one Elder token on this card, then you may flip this card. Yeah, we're going to purify the world. That seems like a Lily Chen thing. We'll discard this and discard this. But now we have to do, what was that, an influence minus one test? Yeah, so that's rolling one die. Otherwise, we're going to get a pursuit condition. We need a five or six on this die. We got a five. That'll work. We know the star spawn in Istanbul has four health, so that's not even going to take it out. So let's try this one. Two health. Beautiful. It's done. This now means if we can get Agnes over here, she could potentially close this gate. Okay, now Agnes, she's at a clue token location, so we can do a research encounter if we want and try and gain this clue. Or we could just do a general encounter here since this space is just considered a water space, so we wouldn't have any specific encounter for that location. It would just be a general one. But I specifically went here because I wanted to uh, see if I could claim that clue. 
You explore a massive iceberg and discover a stone tablet frozen deep inside. You cannot make out the writing without liberating it from the ice. A strength test? Our strength is two. <laughs> if you pass, the tablet tells of the Windwalker. Gain this clue and one additional clue. If you fail, you accidentally destroy the tablet. Discard this clue. Come on, Agnes, destroy that ice. No, definitely not. <laughs> she destroyed the clue. During the mythos phase, the first thing we get to do is spawn two more clues. So this one will be in oh, Istanbul, which is great because we've got mons a monster there <laughs> and a gate. So we're probably not going to get that one. And the other one is going to be in location two. Then we have a rumor, and that's going to be in space eight. And then that will have a total of four markers on here. And there'll be something that will uh, discard those Eldritch tokens. And if all of them are discarded, something bad potentially could happen. You dream of a life as an insane wizard thousands of years ago in Atlantis. Must be Gandalf or something. Maybe Dumbledore. You also dream of that same wizard still alive today on an uncharted island. Growing madness. As an encounter, an investigator on Space 8 may attempt to find the Uncharted Isle using their observation. If she passes, she may spend clues equal to 2 to solve this rumor. When there are no Eldritch tokens on this card, each investigator loses 3 sanity, then solves this rumor. Oh, so we probably don't want to leave this alone, otherwise we're going to take a big sanity hit. The lead investigator, whenever we see the uh, reckoning symbol, the lead in investigator gains a madness condition, then discards one Eldritch token from this card for each madness condition that she has. <sighs> so the more, man, you, the more mad you get, the faster you're going to push through this. It just so happens Space 8 is where Agnes is at now. Too bad she doesn't have enough clues. She would have had she been able to get that clue here. <gasps> Oh, uh, yeah, but instead she broke the tome, and now she's going to have to go probably get this clue if she wants to do that. We also have the clue over here in Istanbul, but that will be uh, surely fun to try and get to with that star vampire there. This will complete round two. I could move the lead investigator token, but I think I'm just going to leave it with Ursula. It just helps me with making sure I track who's activated. Let's move to the action phase and see what we want to do. For our action phase, Ursula will move here and then spend that one additional health so she can move one more space, thanks to that artifact she found. But she only has four health, so I might want to be careful with that. Our second action, let's try and acquire some assets. We roll four dice. We have one success. So we will then uh, use a focus, but we'll use our ability where we can use one less focus to re-roll. That's a two. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Here's our focus. Come on. One more. And that's a five. Here's our two successes. We have here, when an investigator on Sydney performs an inquire assets action, we can spend those two successes to gather the necessary supplies. We'll gain one provisions unique asset. Here we have the provisions asset. If you've been watching our playthrough, I feel like we've got Takada with us from Arkham Horror LCG. <laughs> When an investigator moves to Miskatonic Outpost, she may discard one Provisions Unique Asset to complete this adventure. So I'm hoping I can do that with Ursula next time. Lily's first action will be to travel. She's going to move off the board here, moving to this C space, then spend a ship ticket so she can move one additional space, going to San Francisco. As her second action, she'll then prepare and claim one of these tickets again, because then she should be, get to be able to get to Buenos Aires next turn. We're apparently all about the sea at this time, because Agnes is going to move to spot 7 for her first action. Second action, she's going to claim a ship ticket, so that way she can get over to this clue that you just off the board, but next time, and then hopefully deal with that rumor. We've all completed our actions. Let's do the encounter phase, starting with Ursula, and we're going to draw a Sydney encounter. Late at night, dark young wander into the city from the surrounding wilderness. You struggle to escape from the creatures. We have to test our strength, which is three. If you fail, the attack leaves you badly wounded, lose two health, holy moly, uh, and gain a back injury condition. Three dice looking for one success. No successes. We're going to lose two health. That puts us down to only two health remaining and a back injury. When you perform a rest action, you may roll one die. On a five or six, discard this card. But every time the reckoning happens, we have to test our strength. If we fail, we flip this. 
I think she might have to rest next time. She has all of her sanity, but her health at two is terrible. Lily is going to try and close the gate that she's at. There's no monsters there, so she can do that. We've got Yagoth. You discover a series of large blue objects with discs attached by metal rods. You believe the Maigo transmit information using these discs and try to learn what you can about Yagoth. Well, our lore is two, so we have to do a two minus one. We have to roll one die to see if we succeed. Looking for that five or six. That's a six. That'll work. You receive a telegraphic image of a way home. Close this gate. The disc begins to alter your brain. A willpower test minus one, so roll two. If you pass, you use this to your benefit. Gain one boon condition. If you fail, the changes are irrevocable. Lose one sanity and gain a head injury. I'd really love to get a boon over a head injury, so let's roll these up. Oh, man, both of those are fails. I do have my lucky rabbit foot. That allows me, once per round, you may reroll one die when resolving a test. Rerolling this, that's a five. That will be a success. We've become righteous for taking out that gate. <laughs> when you perform a focus action or a rest action, gain one focus or recover, recover one sanity. Uh, and then whenever the reckoning happens, you may flip this card, so you don't have to flip it. The San Francisco gate now has been closed. I'll set this aside in a discard pile. Agnes is in a general city space, so we're drawing a general encounter card. To find the city's legendary magic shop requires knowledge of ley lines, so we have to test our lore minus one. That's three dice for us. If you pass, the owner will sell you only a single uh, curio. Gain one random magical asset from the deck. If you fail, you, your search seems to have led you through another world. Move to a random space. Oh, I don't want to move to a random space. Three dice, looking for one, five, plus. How about two sixes? We were given an enchanted blade. Gain plus one willpower and plus three strength during combat encounters. <gasps> that is cool. We'll move to that mythos phase. And yeah, I was worried about this. This is not going to be good. First thing we're going to do is advance the omen by one. That'll move us to the blue symbol here, but fortunately we still don't have any gates with that blue symbol. We only have Istanbul, that's green, so no advancement of Doom. Remember, these first four are the easy ones, so that's why we're probably keeping our Doom where it is. As we get to the regular and then hard ones, that Doom's probably going to run up real quick. Next, we have our Reckoning again. No monsters on the board with Reckoning, but our Ancient One, I think we're all going to get Hypothermia. I was thinking about grabbing some focus, and I totally forgot to do that, and I believe I used Ursula's ability. So yeah, we're all going to gain uh, hypothermia, with the difference that Agnes, we're going to have to flip her hypothermia. Both Ursula and Lily have hypothermia, and then Agnes will flip this. It says, a terrible cold descends upon you, chilling you to the bone, and sapping your hope away. Lose one health and gain one madness condition. Then discard this card and gain a new one. So one health and one sanity. Let's see, what does that put her at? So if we lose both of those, she's still at six health and four sanity. Now we have all of our conditions and spells that have this symbol on it. So we'll start with Lily. Lily has this one. We may flip it. Let's try it. Let's just try it. We have Silver Twilight Alliance. The sound of chanting fills the dark room. Getting the Order of the Silver Twilight Lodge to assist you in this ritual has surely used up every last bit of your good karma. When the ritual ends, you know the world is a safer place. Close one gate of your choice on any space or retreat doom by one. Oh, let's close a gate. I love closing gates. Oh, then discard this card. Oh, so it was a one-time use. We didn't even get to use the other benefit. Bummer. The gate in Istanbul, though, closes. That means we have no gates out right now. That's not going to last because we're going to have to put out one soon. But still, feels good. We now have the Mind's Eye for Agnes. We're going to test our lore. Uh, let's see how many successes we get. We get no successes. I could use a clue to reroll. Not worth it. Not worth it. The spell's lingering effects erode your mind, either impair your lore or your influence or will, Unless you discard this card. No, we're just going to discard this card. I don't want to do that. We'll now do Ursula next. She has to do a test of her strength for her back injury. Rolling three dice just needs one success. We've got a six. We're good. Okay, then we have the Dark Pact. Just don't roll a one. Just don't roll a one. A five. We're good there. Okay, I think that's all of those. The final section, we have to spawn another gate with a monster. Oh wait, I almost cheated. I need to do this Mythos card, and technically I need to do this Mythos card before I do all of the possessions that our investigators have. 
so this isn't going to be good. We have the lead investigator gains a madness condition and then discards one Eldritch token for each madness condition they have. While Ursula is going to gain Tear, that is one madness condition, and will discard one of these Eldritch tokens. But then we have to test our willpower. And this says, when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover sanity. Roll one die on a four, five, or six. Discard this card. Oh my gosh, that pairs terribly with hypothermia. That means when I rest, I don't gain either one of them. Uh, however, I need to do a test of willpower. And you know what my willpower is? Two. Things are not going well for Ursula. <laughs> Let's roll them up. And that's a fail. Terrifying revelation. You can no longer deny the horrible truth. Everything you have learned points to an unavoidable apocalypse. Lose two sanity and discard half of your clues. Well, she doesn't have any clues. Two sanity. Actually, that wasn't terrible because she was at full sanity. She'll go down to only being at four sanity instead of six. And the nice thing is this does not replenish <laughs> like the hypothermia does. Finally, we need to spawn a gate, and we have one in Tunguska, another green. And we'll grab from our bowl of doom. We have, uh, what is this, a warlock that'll be in that place. We'll place the gate and the monster right here. Once inside the lodge, your host invites you to follow him upstairs. Several members stare in astonishment. Outsiders are rarely granted such access. At the top of the stairs, you are ushered into the library, filled with rare and exotic tomes. Now, he says, how can we help you? Whoa, the Silver Twilight Aid! Each investigator may do one of the following. Gain a clue, gain an asset, or gain one spell. Well, I'm definitely going to give a clue to Agnes. That way she has the two clues that she needs to deal with that rumor. For Ursula, I think I'll have her gain a spell, and Lily will gain an asset. Ursula has gained the markings of Isis. Gain plus one to all skills. Once per round, you may re-roll one die when resolving a test. When the reckoning happens, though, we have to test our lore, which actually is three plus one is four, plus one is five, five minus one is four, and then flip this card. That's not terrible. And then over on Lily's side, she has the arcane scholar that she found, probably in that library. Gain plus one lore, and you may re-roll one die when resolving lore tests. Three rounds in, no doom has been lost. Kind of ridiculous, but I, you know that's probably from how I've chosen these Mythos cards. I think that'll change pretty quickly. We've got one more easy one, then we're on to the standards. Currently, I feel like Ursula is the strongest character, so because of that, I'm actually going to move the lead investigator over to Agnes. <laughs> Sorry, Agnes. But just that way, in case we have any more madness, it can go to, to Agnes, not to Ursula. Ursula, we need to find a way to heal with only two health. But, I mean, she's got that spell. It's giving her plus one to all of her skills. She's ridiculous. All right, let's start that next round. We'll start with Agnes. This is going to be pretty simple. We're going to move Agnes over here, and then we're going to claim or gain a focus token. So we're ready for another reckoning. I do not want to have any more hypothermia. Ursula will then go next, moving out of Sydney to Antarctica for her first action. Now, there is a local path from Antarctica to Miskatonic. So, a local path, you can move through it, and it does not cost an action, but you can only do one local path a turn that way. So, we're going to move on to our sideboard. Woo! You can see it right here, that is the local path that we're taking. We're now at the Miskatonic University. There's a local, or outpost, I should say. We have a local action. We can gain a ship ticket or test our influence. If you pass, gain an Antarctic guide unique asset. I like that idea. However, you know what I like even more? Resting. So I'm going to rest, uh, but I don't... Ha yeah, I, I can do that focus thing. I'm going to just rest there. Before we do that second action, when an investigator moves to the Miskatonic outpost, she may discard one provision unique asset to complete this adventure. We're prepared, Takada. We've got it. We've got our provisions. So we're going to discard this, which is a bummer because that could have helped us, and we'll complete Adventure 1. We'll now replace it with a random Adventure 2, Excavating the Elder Things. Chipping away at the ice and snow, you uncover what was buried beneath the star-shaped mounds, but you cannot imagine why anyone would go to such extreme effort. When this card enters play, place an Adventure Token on Lake Camp. When this adventure is completed, advance the active mystery by one, then draw a random Antarctica 3 adventure. As an encounter, an investigator on Lake Camp may excavate the alien bodies buried under the ice and snow. He draws and resolves an Antarctic research encounter. If the effect allows them to gain a clue, complete this adventure instead. Cool. Lake Camp is just right next to the Miskatonic outpost. Our second action will be to rest. We can get one sanity back, so we're at five. 
However, we do not heal any health, but we're going to roll a die on a 4, 5, and 6. We can discard this. We have a 50-50 on this, and we rolled a 4. A 4 will work. We will discard this hypothermia. Lily will be last to go for her actions. She's going to move here and then use her ship ticket to get all the way to Buenos Aires. From there, she'll gain a focus token for her second action. Moving into the encounter step, we are going to have Agnes try and complete this rumor. She will test her observation, which is only two. Why did I? Well, it's two. She does have a focus she could use to reroll, and maybe that's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, because we only get two dice on this. If we do, we solve this. We'll have to discard our two clues that we have to complete this. Two dice, five or six on either one. That's a five. Did you see that? Awesome. Discard both of these. That rumor is solved. Our sideboard comes with different types of encounters. Since we're in a yellow mountain space, we'll draw this one. And apparently I have them upside down. It's the first time I'm using them. <laughs> we have our Miskatonic Outpost. You try to determine what's upsetting the dogs. So we have to test our lore minus one. Our lore is four plus one because of markings of Isis. That's five minus one is four. If you pass, you remove the carved stones found in the area and calm the dogs. Gain one dog sled unique asset. If you fail, their barking makes sleep impossible, lose one sanity. Four dice, just need one success. Uh, it doesn't even matter what I rolled on that one, that flew off. Let's say I got two fives, we're good. The dog sled gives us an action where we can move to an adjacent space on the Antarctica sideboard, then perform one additional action. Boy, she is a moving queen. Last but not least, we have Lily. She is going to try and complete our first of three, hopefully, maybe four mysteries. We have our protective amulet. So our will is three normally. It'll be four for this. We just need one success so we don't take any sanity hits. Four dice. One success is all we need, and that's all we get. Let's then attack the monster. We are going to use this card. That means we have to flip this, and we may instead spend one health to gain plus five during this encounter. So we're going to do that. That puts us down to only four health. However, depending on what we get on successes, maybe nothing additional will happen. <laughs> So we're rolling four plus five is nine, minus two is seven. So we're gonna roll seven dice. I need at least three successes to take this guy out. I do get a free reroll from here. Seven dice, we'll start with the four we have here. We have one success, and then we get to roll these three, and we have three successes. That's actually all we need. Yeah, three successes will take him out. We stop any damage that he do to us. And that means we can place the clue onto that mystery and solve it. Not to mention, because we have three or more successes, there's no additional impacts to us, and we can flip this over. Gosh, I love that with her. And then what we can do is use one of her actions to take some of her sanity, sanity and turn it into health. Also, I believe we can do this. When you defeat a non-epic monster during a combat encounter, place that monster on this card. Then you may flip this card. I might wait to at least have two monsters on here, but we have one right now. We can see here it states at the end of the Mythos phase, if there are clues on this card equal to two, we can solve it. So we'll wait to solve it until the end of the Mythos phase. Speaking of the Mythos phase, we're at that now. So the first thing we get to do is spawn two clues. So our first one will be in location five, and our second one will be in the Himalayas. Your contact in the capital is hesitant to speak about those called the Watches. He says they work for a number of different governments, but answer to some other authority. We have lost knowledge. When this card enters play, spawn the TikTok Men Epic Monster on Space 21. When it is defeated, solve this rumor. When there are no Eldritch Tokens on this card, each investigator discards all of their clues and discard all clues on the game board whoa then solve this uh rumor so we got to take out that uh that epic monster and every time we have one of the reckonings we're just going to discard an eldritch token and there's only three on here we have our two new clues five and over here at the himalayas we have the TikTok men over here at 21 outside of sydney australia and still no doom decrease but <laughs> now we're going to normal cards i have a feeling that will change we'll leave the lead investigator with agnes let's start that next round it seems to be pretty typical that i keep missing things because i get so excited i need to remember that when i completed this adventure retreat doom by one so i get to retreat doom by one because of that Second thing is, I totally forgot to reveal the next card, our mystery card. Remember, we have to complete three of these to win. Kind of important. 
All across the Northern Hemisphere, people have said to have visions of an ancient civilization. The visions are strongest in Greenland, where the cities of Hyperbia are cast into reality. When this card enters play, place a mystery token on Space Nine. As an encounter, an investigator on Space Nine may travel through the veil between worlds and explore the ancient continent of Hyperbia. We'll draw and resolve an Exploring Hyperbia special encounter. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are two Eldritch tokens on this card, we solve our second mystery. Doom will get pushed back to 14, and here we have Greenland, where we can do our mystery encounters. Agnes has always wanted to go to Greenland, so what we're going to do is move here and then use our ship ticket to move to this location. Our second action, we're just simply going to grab a second focus token. I believe we can only have two of those. Ursula's first action, she's going to do the local action here. Gain one ship ticket or test your influence. I don't really know if I need the Antarctic guide. I mean, she's an awesome traveler anyways, so we'll just go for the ship ticket. Then we'll use our action where she can move across one uncharted uh, path and then gain an additional action. Her then second, or I should say third action, will then be to rest because that will finally get her back up to three health and six sanity. Of course, I'm realizing I'm using the wrong token here. There we go. That is the adventure token. This token is for one of the, the stranger things, and I'm not using that deck because we don't have one with the prelude or the mon uh, elder one or ancient one that we're fighting doesn't require that deck. Lily is just going to do some traveling this time. First action, she'll gain a ship ticket, so that then her second action when she travels, she can travel here and then use that ship ticket to move herself all the way to Sydney. We'll now move into the encounter phase. Agnes is in a spot where she can explore uh, Hyperborea. In the depths of the Mount Vorhumaneth, you discover an ancient shrine to the toad god Togasaka. <laughs> The shrine has recently been used for some ritual, but before you can examine the remnants, a terrifying sound shakes your courage. Okay, she has a will test. Her will is two. She has nothing to boost that up, so it's just going to be two of dice. We'll roll them, but two sixes, that's totally good. You keep your calm, but make haste to flee the source of the ruckus, taking note of the arcane sigils used around the shrine. Oh, we have to use our observation? That's two as well. If you pass, place one Eldritch token on the active mystery. If you fail, the journey gains you nothing but nightmares, gain a, hall and a hallucination condition. We'll roll our two dice for observation. One and a three, that's a fail. So let's go ahead and use one of our focus to re-roll one of these. And we get a five. Wow. That means we just placed one Eldritch token on that mystery card. We are blowing through this. I'm thinking maybe the next time I play this, I do not use the easy Mythos cards. We're now to Ursula's turn. Normally, whenever you have a clue that's on that sideboard, you have to draw from this clue deck. Since we're trying to do the adventure, we actually will draw from this clue deck for this specific encounter. And we potentially can gain a clue here, but instead of gaining a clue, we complete our adventure. So we are at Lake Camp. You look through Professor Lake's geological samples. So we have to do our observation, which is 3, plus 1, which is 4, minus 1, which is 3. If you pass, you see the black seeds appear only recently. Gain this clue. If you fail, a seed gets trapped in your clothing. Gain a hunted condition. Three dice for this test. We'll roll them up. And we've got a 6 and a 5. You guys... That is ridiculous. We can see here it states, if the effect allows you to gain the clue, complete this adventure instead. When this adventure is completed, advance the active mystery by one. What that means, we look at the mystery and see what type of mystery it is. This mystery is looking for Eldritch tokens. So we simply get to place an Eldritch token on it, which means we now have the two that we need. So at the end of our Mythos phase, we've completed two mysteries already. We only need to do one more. Our Doom is at 14. Yeah, this has been an insane playthrough. <laughs> uh, then we also will draw a level three Antarctica card, and we have the beast under the city. Confronting the Shegus, you are paralyzed by their enormous size and strength. How did the Elder Thing ever control such creatures? In the end, they couldn't be contained. When this card enters play, spawn the rampaging Shagath epic monster on City of the Elder Things. When this adventure is completed, advance the active mystery by one. Once again, we're going to get a new mystery, and however we need to complete it, if we take that guy out, we would get one success on there. If it was we have to take out an epic monster, we could deal two damage to it. Yeah, kind of cool. When an investigator encounters a rampaging, rampaging Shagath epic monster, before resolving the strength test, 
you can spend a clue. If you don't, you automatically fail. When the rampaging Shagath epic monster is defeated, complete this adventure. It appears we have our rampaging Shagath right here. I'm going to remove this adventure token because we have now completed that adventure. Lily currently is in Sydney. The constable sees you admire the abandoned weapon. Give it a bit to see if anyone claims it, he says. If not, you can help yourself. You may become delayed to gain one random weapon asset from the deck. Whoa, that's kind of cool, but Lily doesn't need weapons. She's got her martial prowess, so I'm not going to become delayed. I'm going to stay where I'm at. We'll now move into the Mythos phase. Here we have our first regular Mythos card. You can see there's no uh, snowflakes on the side. That means this is a normal one. We're going to advance the Omen by one, then do a new thing called Resolve a Monster Surge. We'll resolve a Monster Surge on each space containing a gate that corresponds to the current Omen. If no gate corresponds to that omen, just spawn a gate and then put a monster. And then we'll spawn two more clues. I'm just going to pull those out right now. So we've got one in Rome, and we have one in location 16. We'll advance the omen by one space. We only have one gate out, but it is green, so that's going to increase our doom by one. That isn't terrible. We're just back to where we started. However, we are going to spawn two additional monsters at that green gate. Before we do that, I missed that this enemy had this reckoning symbol the last time. Let's just see what it says. Roll a die on a one or a two, the nearest investigator gains a cursed condition. So we are gonna check that quick. Also, I'm just going to spawn two more monsters there. So we're going to grab, ooh, we have a cultist. And our next one we have is called a skeleton. Let's not roll a one or a two, shall we? Oh, it's a three. Okay, I was trying to figure out how I was going to determine who is the closest investigator to gain a curse. We don't have to worry about that. You cannot believe that this gibbering lunatic was once the smiling, lucid lawyer you spoke to this morning. Collapsed. His trembling hands indicated empty air. The worlds collided and the door collapsed. He abruptly pulls himself off the floor and looks out the small window of his cell. But so too will they pull, they will rip and tear, and a new door will open elsewhere. We have dimensional instability. Discard each gate that corresponds to the current omen and advance the doom by one for each gate discarded. Okay, that's not terrible. We only have one gate out. It is the green gate. We'll get rid of it and we'll increase doom by one. The part that isn't so great is we're going to have some devastation the next time we push doom down. Before we end our round, I'm going to remember this time to discard our second mystery card. Only one more to go. Let's flip it over. We have Supplying the North. <laughs> that kind of sounds like a Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones thing or I don't know, something like that. The increasingly harsh winter has disrupted the vital flows of basic necessities to those cities and towns in the northern hemisphere that are now cut off from the world by the deluge of ice and snow. When this card enters play, place one Eldritch token on each of the following spaces, 4, 9, 19, and Tunguska. I'm not going to Tunguska, there's three enemies there. When an investigator on a city space performs an acquire assets action, you may spend two successes to gain a provisions unique asset. We just need a lot of provisions in this scenario. <laughs> we got them before Ursula had them. We need some more. At the end of the mythos phase, each investigator on a space containing an Eldritch token may discard one provisions unique asset and spend a clue to place an Eldritch token on this card. Then if there are Eldritch tokens on this card equal to half of what we have here, so that would be two, uh, then we solve this mystery and we win the game because that's the third one. We've placed out on the board those two additional clues. We have the Eldritch tokens. Four, nine just happens to be where Agnes is. Too bad she doesn't have a clue. Four, nine, 19 over there, and Tanguska. Those are all the northern locations where we can try and solve our mystery. So my plan is I can try and do one of those, and then if I take out that epic monster that's in Alaska, we actually could just win the game because that's the two that we need to do. But before any of that, we will be having uh, Lily take out these TikTok guys. <laughs> okay, let's start that next round. Agnes will continue to be the lead investigator using a travel action to move to Arkham. And then let's see if we can acquire an asset because if we do that and we're able to get those provisions, then all we need to do is grab this clue next time get ourselves to location four, and we can solve one part of that mystery. We'll roll three dice for this. We have one success. We need two. I think we're going to take a debt. We're going to gain this debt condition, so we have three successes, spending two to grab a provisions card. This means now all we need is that clue. However, I'm going to have to probably deal with uh, this debt. 
apparently we don't need the railroads this game because we're just going to get a ship ticket with Lily and then have Lily move over here for her second action. Ursula's first action, she is simply going to rest. She does not have hypothermia, right? No, nope, she does not. She's good. Her second action then, actually, before she does her second action, she's going to use her dog sled. She can move to an adjacent space on the Antarctic sideboard, then perform an additional action. Well, why the heck not? We'll move here. Then we're going to use our action where we can move on an uncharted uh, path and then gain an extra action back. So we're here, and we will then gain a focus token for our second action. Gosh, she can do so much. And now she's got two rerolls, potentially. Oh, wait a second. Ursula can't take this guy out, not without a clue. So <laughs> she needs to have a clue. Instead, she's going to move down to the snowy mountains because we can resolve something there, then go to the plateau of Lang to claim that clue. There we go. That makes more sense. That's going to make him a little bit harder because right now there's no way to get to the plateau of Lang. But if I resolve an encounter here, then I will be able to get to the plateau of Lang. To start the encounter step, Agnes is in Arkham. They say that strange creatures perform ancient rituals on Devil Reef off the coast of Insomouth. But to witness them, you have to know when to go and where to hide. You may spend one clue to gain an incanta incantation spell and one non-ritual spell. God, I wish I had one. I don't have any, so I can't do that. We'll do Lily next. She has the TikTok men. I have no idea what's on the back side of this. Let's see. Oh, interesting. You cannot spend clues to reroll dice during this combat encounter. Toughness is equal to the amount of players plus two. Whoa, so it's toughness is three, four, five health? Oh my gosh. So we have to do five damage, but we don't have to do a sanity check because these are regular humans. I love that. We do have to do our skill check of strength minus two. With five health, this could get interesting fast. We'll spend one health, so we get plus five. Five plus four is nine, minus two is seven. We get that free reroll, roll, don't forget. We're rolling our four dice here. No successes. Oh, this is this is this is brutal. <laughs> we'll roll our remaining three. Okay, we've got two successes. We get one free reroll. Oh, that's a three. Do I want? Ooh, that was our free reroll. We'll use our lucky rabbit's foot to use another reroll. That's three successes. That means we won't take any damage. And that's three damage there. I think I'm gonna stay at that. So we've dealt three damage to him. Uh, we still have two more to take them out. It's important to note that on enemies, damage is persistent, so we'll put a three here. We also needed three successes so we wouldn't gain an injury, and we got just three successes. So we'll flip this back over. We're good. Ursula is in the snowy mountains. You study the blocks and openings on the mountainside as your plane flies over. Our observation is four, minus one is three. If you pass, you obtain insight into the engineering of the Elder Things. Gain one clue! If you fail, you cannot grasp the meaning of these designs. Lose the sanity. Three dice, hoping for one success here. We've got it. That will give us a clue. So I'll grab a clue from our cup. Awesome. So that means now all we need to do is get into that space of the rampaging Shagath, and we can hopefully take him out and get one success on the mystery. We also have here, after an investigator resolves a location encounter or a research encounter on this space, they may move to the Plateau of Lang. Definitely going to move to the Plateau of Lang. That means we're one space away from the rampaging Shagath. Moving to the next mythos phase, we have advancing the omen, a monster surge, and clues. I'll just do the two clues right now. One is in location 6, and the other is in 17. We'll advance the omen tracker one space. We have no gates out at all, so no advancement of doom. Then we have a monster surge, but there's no gates that are blue that are out on the board. So we're going to spawn a gate. Oh, we just spawned one in London. And you always draw a monster for that. And we have ooh, another cultist. Ever since you were bitten, you've been kept awake by fever. For the third time in less than a day, you peel away the festering bandages. The wound is not healing. If anything, it's getting worse. Vile wounds. The lead investigator loses two health and gains an infection condition. Oh, here's the infection condition. That will be for Agnes. When you perform a rest action, you cannot recover health. Well, I can't recover health anyways because I've got hypothermia. <laughs> uh, on a four, five, or six, discard this card. You have to test your strength, and if you fail, flip this. Also taking two damage, that'll put her down to four health remaining. We've just completed our sixth round of the game. I think overall doing pretty well with only one gate out. 
but I have a feeling things are just going to get worse. We've got to get out of here while the getting's good. <laughs> Lily has three damage on this TikTok. I'm hoping that she can take that out. I'm hoping that Agnes can go and get a clue, but I am worried about that reckoning symbol. It's going to hit a lot of us. So let's see what we can do. Am I going to change the first player? No, I'm going to leave it with Agnes for another round. And then maybe after next round, we'll give it to Lily. So let's start with Agnes and go from there. For Agnes's first action, we're going to try and rest. That won't do anything to our health, but we will gain one sanity, putting us back up to our max of five. And now we're going to roll a die for each of these to see if we can discard either one. Our first die roll will be for the infection. Fail. Our second one will be for hypothermia. Fail. <laughs> oh, she's never going to get rid of those. After Agnes failed to get rid of that injury or uh, the hypothermia, she's just going to go over here to Minneapolis St. Paul and try and claim this clue. I was thinking of moving Ursula into the space with that uh, epic monster, but I actually have an idea. In case I can't defeat it in one go, I'm going to need more than one clue. And there's a clue here. So I think for my first action, I'm just going to focus. So I have two of focus. And our second action, we're just going to rest. We have our sanity at full. We're just going to grab one more health. That puts us at four. We're slowly getting back up to our six. We could do this to move around, but I don't need to move right now. I'm going to stay here trying to collect this clue. Lily's two actions will also be quick. She's going to spend three sanity to get three health and gain a second focus token. So we are all ready for the encounter phase. Agnes is currently in a city with a clue, so she's doing a research encounter. You've been trapped by the blizzard for days and your mind begins to waver. Oh, test her uh, will, which is only two. If you pass, you occupy yourself by rereading your notes and notice something you hadn't before. Gain this clue. If you fail, your mind crumbles before you and you escape y your shelter. Gain one madness condition. We're only rolling two dice, but we do have a focus for a reroll and we're going to need it. Let's use it. Come on, I need a five or a six to get that clue. That's a four. So instead we get a madness and we're going to discard our focus. This could be bad. Apparently we ran outside in a blizzard because we were hungry. <laughs> when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover sanity. Well, why not? I can't recover health two times over. Why not sanity as well? When we hit the reckoning symbol, we have to test our will. If we fail, flip this card. Ursula is next. We are going to encounter our clue, but we draw from the specific research deck for the Antarctic sideboard. We are at the Plateau of Ling. An elder thing has attacked and now suspends a member of your party over a pit. You hear a mechanical grinding below. An elder thing monster ambushes you. If you pass the uh, will test, you rescue the victim before he disappears into the pit. Gain this clue. They have us pull out an elder thing at the beginning. Oh my gosh, that's a three. You know what my will is? Three. Let's see. It is for a combat encounter. Do I have anything for that? No, I absolutely do not. So likely we're, I mean, I have to get three successes on three dice. This is a three for three at test and we roll one success. I will use one of my free focus uh, symbols uh, to roll this up and I've got a failure. So I'd have to use both focus. No, I'm just going to, I'm going to forgo that member of my party. Sorry. <laughs> and I don't get the clue. We're back to Lily. You know what we're going to do. Martial prowess. Pump this up to this side for a plus five. Five plus four is nine. Minus two is seven. Uh, we just need to deal two damage. No sanity check on this one. We need three successes for no damage, but even two successes will take them out. We have one here, and that's four dice. So we'll roll these three again. Five, six, seven. Oh, no successes. One free reroll. And we've got two. That will take him out. However, I'd gain an injury token. I don't think I want to do that. So I believe what I'm going to do is use my lucky rabbit's foot. Come on, I just need one more success. No, that's not a success. I have one focus token. Let's use it for a reroll. And that's a one. Do I use the next one? That's my last one. Yes, I'm going to use it. I'm going to make this a five or a six. Five or a six. How about a four? <gasps> Oh, bummer. Wow. We did not do great. So that means we are going to take one damage because he attacks for three. However, we do also take him out. This card and the enemy will be discarded. However, we do gain an injury. And the one I grabbed was the leg injury. When you perform a rest action, you may roll one die on a five or six. Discard this. Uh, we have to test our combat whenever the reckoning happens. If we fail, we flip this card. 
Yeah, that stunk. And that's because we pushed our body too hard. We only got two successes with the seven dice. Not to mention, we also have to discard this card so we just lost our martial prowess. Ah, oh, that really stunk. Oh wait, the one solstice to this, we have reduced the damage of monsters you encounter by one to a minimum of one. So we actually don't take the damage. We're back to five health, which is good. If you defeat all enemies in your space, you still get to do an encounter. And I'd say, why the heck not? We're in a wilderness space. Your food has gone bad and there's no place nearby to purchase more supplies. Maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> oh, well, I did. If you want to eat, you'll have to hunt for your meal. So our observation is two. Uh, minus one, which is one. If you pass, the meal invigorates you. Recover to health. If you fail, you have, you have to make uh, do with the rancid food. Gain a poisoned condition. Why did I choose to do this? Sometimes you make poor decisions in life, and this is one of them. We rolled a one. Let's get a poison condition on top of all this. When you perform a rest action, you cannot recover health or sanity, but we get to flip this card. However, while this is out and we're poisoned, anytime we have the reckoning, we're just going to lose a health. Moving to the Mythos phase, this is going to hurt that Reckoning. So first we have Advancing Doom, or I should say Advance the Omen. Then we have the Reckoning, then we have Spawning the Gate. We'll move to the Red Omen. We only have one gate out right now, and it's blue in London. Now we're going to activate the Reckonings, and this is where life gets a little sad. The Cultists, some Cultists have a Reckoning, but this one does not, so we can ignore that. However, we know the Warlock. And it says, roll one die on a one or a two. The nearest investigator gains a cursed condition. One, two, three, four, five, six, or one, two, three, four, five. So that would be Lily. Not a one or two. How about a two? This is absolutely brutal. Only sixes count as successes on your tests. If you would gain another cursed condition, flip this card. If you would gain a blessed condition, discard this card uh, instead. We do have a Reckoning, roll one die on a four, five, or six, discard this card. And the only good thing is we are doing a Reckoning, so we will do that shortly. The other monster that has that symbol is this Rampaging Shagath. Let's see what it does. This monster recovers two health. Then each investigator on this space or an adjacent space loses one sanity. That would just be Ursula, so she'll go down to five sanity. That's actually not terrible. Four health, a two, and a two. Yeah, this, this could be an interesting one to fight. We then resolve the Ancient One's uh, Reckoning, and unfortunately, the two people that have hypothermia, they don't have any focus because they both tried to use it and failed. <gasps> oh, bummer. So they're each going to flip over their hypothermia cards. Now, Ursula has to focus, but she'll use her effect where she can spend zero focus as one, so she does not gain the hypothermia. The one on the left is Agnes. Let's see what it says. It says, chill haunting. The cold is somehow unnatural. You feel it piercing your mind and chilling your very soul. Roll one die on a one or two, gain a bane condition. Then discard this card and gain another condition, the hypothermia. Let's just see what Lily has. She has children are chilled to the bone. The temperature has dropped and you are unable to warm yourself. You must seek shelter if you hope to survive the night or uh, become delayed. Then discard this card and gain a hypothermia condition. So Lily will just be on her side. She has to spend one action standing up next turn. Let's not roll a one or a two, please. This time we rolled a two. <laughs> we get a bane. We also have the Cursed Bane. Oh my gosh, only sixes count as successes. Right now, Ursula is the only one that can really do anything. We now have to resolve all possessions and conditions and their reckoning effects. We're going to start with Agnes because she's the lead investigator. Some men have come to collect your debt. Flip this card. We have the men wears a hat and a brown trench coat. We do not want money, he hisses and grabs your throat. You feel as if part of your identity is being stolen from you. Test your will. If you fail, a fragment of your soul is ripped away. Lose three sanity, then discard this card. Our will is two and I believe in us. And yes, we did great. Next, we'll try and get rid of our cursed effect. We just need to roll a four, five, or six to do that. No, we rolled a one. So we're going to keep that curse, and we're going to be happy about it. <laughs> then we're going to have to test our strength. You know what our strength is? Two. Uh, if you fail, flip this card. I don't even want to know. Uh, and we're going to know. We're going to find out. The infection spreads, and you can see your veins turning black beneath your discolored skin. Lose one health, then flip that card back over. Yeah, okay. Agnes, unfortunately, is down to three health. We're now going to test our will. But don't forget, only sixes are successes. And we rolled, and we got a six. So actually, we're okay. We'll then do Ursula next. She has her dark pact. Don't roll a one. And we rolled a one. Nightmare meeting. 
The hooded figure approaches you, gliding as if floating just above the ground. You hear the figure's rattling voice in your mind, probing from the names of your companions. Suddenly you awake in a cold sweat. Each other investigator gains a cursed condition unless she gains a dark pact condition. Yeah, they're both going to get a dark pact condition. <laughs> we'll just deal with it. Well, that was just great. Next, let's do our back injury. We have strength of three plus one because of the markings of Isis. So we'll roll four dice. We just want to succeed. Oh, look at that. Three out of the four of those are successes. Then we need to test our lore. Our lore is three plus one plus one is three, four, five. Minus one is four dice again. We just need, well, I actually have no idea what we need here. We're just going to roll and see what we get. How about no successes? Do we want to use a focus? I think we should. I think we want at least one success. Maybe? Uh, well, we didn't get it, so let's just see what we get. Resolve the effect based on your test result. You must focus your mind to maintain the magic. Discard this card unless you spend a focus. Thank goodness I have one more. We'll spend that second focus, and that will allow us to keep this card. So we have then flip this card. Last to go is Lily. She is going to start by trying to get rid of her cursed four, five, or six. Beautiful cursed is gone. Uh, yeah, discard this card. Thank you very much. Okay, then we have our dark pact. Just don't roll a one. Uh, we've got a three. We're good there. Then we have to test our strength. Our strength is four. We just need one success and fives or sixes will work. We've got a five and a six, so that one's good. And finally, we're a poison, so we just lose one health. Finally, we'll spawn a gate, and we have this one in the Amazon. And we'll have from the monsters, let's see, a maniac. The wizened old monk whispers, I have spent eons preparing for this darkness, but time has shown me that humanity may not be worthy. What would you give of yourself? What will you offer to prove that you deserve to be saved, for good or for evil? Our event is advanced doom by one unless the lead investigator gains an agreement condition. No, I'm not. I'm not gaining any conditions. We'll just deal with the doom. Plus, I kind of want to draw one of those devastation cards and see what happens. It's our first time, or my first time that I'm using that expansion. They can't be that terrible, right? Let's see. We have a tsunami destroys Tokyo. <laughs> A well of water escapes Tokyo Bay and inundates everything in its path, picking buildings up off their foundation and tossing cars around like toy boats. Each investigator on Tokyo loses three health and five sanity and gains two injury tokens. Okay, no one's there. Tokyo is devastated. We have now lost one of our nine cities. What happens now is if we draw a clue that needs to be placed there, we discard it. A devastated space does not have a space type and it's no longer a city space. We can, though, still do encounters there. We'll just draw from the Devastation Encounter deck to see what we have. And then, like I said before, if all nine named cities on the board are devastated, we lose the game. I'm going to blame myself for how that round went. I was talking about how easy the game was, and then the game kicked me in the pants. <laughs> and poor uh, Agnes was the brunt of that one. Although Lily, I mean, she's knocked over. She's delayed. She Well, at least she doesn't have that dark, whatever that's called, the curse. Agnes can only succeed on sixes right now. That's brutal. Okay, let's see if we can get this clue. I might need to get Lily start collecting clues and getting up north. We'll see what we can do. Let's start that next turn. Do I want to still... I'm going to still have Agnes be the lead investigator. I took a little break in recording, and this showed up at my door, so I have just shuffled all these cards in. I just wanted you to know, in case you all of a sudden start seeing a mask of Narlothotep cards, <laughs> that's why. All right, let's start that next turn. Agnes is in a good spot, so I think the first thing she's going to do is just gain a focus token. That way, if we have the reckoning symbol, we don't die. <laughs> Our second action will be to rest. However, we're not going to be able to heal any health or any sanity, but maybe we can get rid of some of these. We'll do hypothermia first. We need a four, five, or six. No, that's a one. Let's do hunger second. We'll do four, fives, or sixes. No, that's a one. How about infection? We need a four, five, or six. No, that's a one. <laughs> we just rolled three ones in a row. Well, at least we got them out of our system. Maybe Lily can have a slightly better turn. She's going to become undelayed and stand up, and her second action is gaining a focus. So, you know, it can't get any better, right? Ursula is going to try really hard to get this clue. So, first thing she's going to do is rest. She'll gain one sanity back and one of her health. She's at five health and six total sanity. Since she rested, hopefully she can get rid of her back injury. 
We just need a four, five, or six. How about a two? So no, we'll keep that back injury with us. Our second action will be to gain a focus token. We've all done our actions. I don't even know if that constitutes as actions, more just like we've all done our failures. Now we're going to succeed in the encounter phase. We'll start with Agnes. We're doing a research encounter. The blizzard has trapped you in the city's library. The storm will not let up until morning, and you take the time to rest and prepare for the challenges ahead. Recover one health and one sanity or discard a hypothermia condition. Okay, we didn't get a clue, which is actually kind of a bummer, but I will still take discarding this since we can never seem to roll to get rid of it. Hypothermia is gone. Lily is currently in the wilderness. The terrible isolation of this area is making it hard for you to sleep. We're going to test our will, which is three. If you pass, a good night's rest leaves you feeling better than you ever have. Improve one skill of your choice, which, by the way, she can improve it twice because of her ability. Uh, if you fail, the insomnia leaves you on edge. Lose one sanity. Three dice looking for one success. There's a five. Let's improve our strength by two. We're now a six strength. <gasps> That's awesome. Ursula is going to try and collect the clue in the Plateau of Lang. Murals inside the tower depict the Elder Things using the tower to call a god. You try to read the writing under the images. Now, we use our lore minus one. Our lore is four, plus one, which is five. So minus one, which is back to four. However, something I've been forgetting. Um, Anna is with us, and she gives us you and other investigators on your space roll one additional die when resolve, uh, resolving research encounters. And this is a research encounter. So we're going to add one die to that. So we are at four, five, minus one, which is four, plus one, which is five. We're at a five dice. If you pass, gain the dull chance artifact. If you fail, you call something to you, uh, gain one pursuit. But we don't get the clue. We'll roll five dice on this. Let's see if we need to. No, we don't. We have a success. So that means we'll gain the dull chance artifact. This dull chance actually is not terrible. When resolving a combat encounter, you may test your lore. If you pass, you may spend one sanity to roll three additional dice when resolving a combat test during that encounter. We'll move to that mythos phase. We're going to advance the doom, followed by the monster surge, and then let's do the clues. We'll do those right now. We'll grab our first one, that is Arkham, and then our second one will be location four. We'll move the omen track up to the blue space. We only have one gate that has the blue uh, symbol, so that means we'll move doom up by one. And then we'll do that monster surge. That means we're going to have to reveal two different monsters. So our first one here is the zombie. And then our second monster, let's see, what is this called? Oh, yeah, it's called the Leviathan or something like that. When this monster is spawned, move it to the Amazon. All right, we'll increase our doom by one to the ten spot. Walking down the street, you are surrounded by locked doors and boarded up windows. You see only a few people striding down the sidewalk, and almost all of them avoid eye contact. Those that do look in the eye glare at you suspiciously. We have driven to bankruptcy. This is ongoing. When this card enters play, discard all cards from the reserve. Cards cannot be placed in the reserve while that's there. We will have a reckoning. We'll discard this card and place the top four cards of the asset deck into the reserve. We've cleaned out the reserve, and gosh, that was not a great turn for us. We didn't do much at all, but you know what? We should be able to go and take out that epic monster, and all we need is Ag Agnes to be able to get that clue token. Agnes will have her first action to be gaining a focus token. There's no real reason to move. Our second action, we're going to try and rest and maybe get rid of some of these blasted conditions that we have. <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to. Let's see if we can. I do need to remember, we were able to get rid of hypothermia, so we just have uh, infection and hunger. So let's roll for infection first. We'll give our die a roll, and let's see what we get. We get a five. That means we can remove that one. Okay, what's next is hunger. Let's see if we can do hunger. We roll a five, so we can do hunger too. Both of those have been discarded. We're finally starting to heal ourselves. This is awesome. Lily will take her first action to travel to Sydney, and her second action, she'll gain a second ship ticket. What, like I said, I'm just not going for railroads, apparently. The first thing Ursula's going to do is rest. She's already at full for sanity, so it's just for her health. We'll check her back injury in just a second. I'm just going to finish what I'm doing here. She's going to do that action to move here and then gains an action back because that's an uncharted path. And then her final action, she'll gain a second focus token. So she'll have two. If we can roll a four, five, or six, we can get rid of that back injury. Yes. 
finally, we're finally healing up a little bit. Back injury is gone. Agnes will try and research yet again in the city. At the crime scene, you find the victim has been mauled as if some savage animal has attacked him. We would have to test our observation. If you pass, you inspect the wound and recognize human teeth marks gain this clue. If you fail, the killer returns while you're distracted. A Wendigo monster ambushes you and only sixes are successes. You know what our observation is? Yeah, two. I have two focus tokens. Let's roll them up. I'm definitely going to need one. We will use one. Come on, six. Come on, six. <gasps> That's a six. That'll work. We passed. We gained that clue. Lily is in Sydney. The Theosophical Society is excited to hear what knowledge you have gained during your travels. You may spend one clue. We don't even have one. If you do, the, uh, they gratefully provide you with an exercise and diet regimen that fortifies your fertility or vitality. Improve your strength. Well, we can't even improve it anymore anyways, so that was a waste. Ursula is now going to take on the rampaging Shagoth epic monster. First thing we need to do is our will test. We need two successes. Our will is normally two. However, with markings of Isis, it'll be a three. We're rolling three dice for this. We have two successes, so I'll just lose one sanity. I'm okay with that. We now will attack this monster. We will use our strength minus one. Our strength normally is three, but thanks to the markings of Isis, it's four. But then we'll put that back down to a three. We will then use the dull chance and discard this clue so that we can actually deal damage to it. So we're going to roll six dice. Oh my gosh, I need four successes on six dice. Is that even possible? I do need to remember, I have this that lets me re-roll a die on a test. I have two focus plus my fake focus. There's a chance we could get four successes here. I believe in us. I do need to remember, it costs us a sanity to do the dull chance. So we're down to only four sanity. We'll roll four out of the six dice. We have two successes already. Okay, we get two more dice to roll on this. Come on, fives and sixes. There's another one. That's three. Okay, we get one re-roll because of this. I just need a five or a six. Uh, no, that's not going to work. I will pretend that I use a focus token, and I can use one less to re-roll. And that's a five. There's four damage. We have here, when the rampaging Shagoth epic monster is defeated, complete this adventure. When this adventure is completed, advance the active mystery by one. So this mystery, we're looking to put Eldritch tokens on this card. So I will place one on here. And that means I only need one more to be able to win the game. We're now to the mythos phase. We need to advance the omen, do another monster uh, a surge, and two more clues. I am going to get gates out there like nobody's business. Uh, we have one in Sydney, which is right where uh, Lily is, and our other one's in location 15. We'll advance the omen. We have no green gates out, so that just means we'll have to spawn one when we have our monster surge. Oh, and this one's in Buenos Aires, and it's blue. And we're going to grab a monster from the bag, and we have, what is this, the Honored Dead. When this monster is spawned, move it to the pyramids. Looking down one avenue, you see shops from the other side of the world. Looking the other way, you see the back of your own head endlessly mirrored. Oh, each turn you take takes you somewhere strange, but you cannot discern the logic that governs these paths. We have the Invisible Maze. Each investigator rolls one die and resolves the corresponding effect. One to two become delayed. Three to five move to a random space. And six, no effect. This could be bad. We'll do Agnes first. She gets a six. Are you serious? No effect. <laughs> oh, she was the one that I did not want to get thrown into a random place. We'll do Lily second. She gets a three. So she's going to move to a random place. How you do this is you just draw from the clue tokens. And she's going to move to the city of elder things, right where Ursula is. And then Ursula is going to roll a five, which also means she's going to move to a random place. She almost had a six. And her random place, let's see what it is. It's going to be at Tokyo. Well, I really don't want to jinx it, but so long as nothing crazy happens, Agnes, for her turn, can move here as long as she survives during the Mythos phase. Because at the end of the Mythos phase, we can give up that clue to token, give up the provisions, and complete the mystery. That's all we have to do. <laughs> That's all we have to do. So actually, I'm going to start with her. I'm going to just move her there, and I'm going to get her a focus token for her second action. Ursula will stay where she's at. I want to show you one of these devastated location encounter cards. Heck, I want to see it. I haven't actually drawn any of those. 
So I'm just going to grab a ship ticket for my first action. And my second action, I'm going to heal. Uh, the only thing I'd heal is sanity because I did take two sanity damage last time. But I'll take that. I already have two focus, so I can't gain any more. Lily is simply going to move to the frozen waste and then gain a focus token for her second action. Moving to that encounter phase, Agnes is in a location with another clue, so I thought I might as well try and get it. It's a wilderness location. In this place, with the night sky overhead, you can commune with the elder god Hypnos. So this would be lore minus one. That would be three for us. If you pass, Hypnos grants you a vision of the Windwalker and the knowledge you need to stop it. Gain this clue and a spell. If you fail, the Elder God punishes you for your arrogance. Gain one Bane condition unless you spend a focus. Well, I can always just spend a focus here. We're rolling three dice. We need a six to succeed. Definitely did not get that. So we're just going to spend a focus. Uh, so that way we don't have to do anything else. Lily is at the frozen waste. You see the corpse of an elder thing that appears to have something beneath it. A foul ichor is oozing out of the body. You may gain one illness condition to move the body. If you gain the condition, you find a rare treasure. Gain an artifact. Nope, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> I don't want an illness. I just got rid of illnesses from Agnes. No need to get illnesses. I'll pass. Finally, we have the devastated space. This is where uh, Ursula is. Unscrupulous profiteers are stealing from homes that were left unprotected when the city was abandoned. Resolve the pass effect to patrol the ruined city yourself, or resolve the fail effect to convince one of your companions to do so. I think we'll do the top one. You keep a vigilant watch over the city to put an end to the thefts, so we have to test our observation. That's four. If you fail, one of the profiteers manages to sneak past you and steal something of yours. Oh, discard an item possession. We're rolling four dice on this. Just need one, five, or six. There's a five. We're good. We're now in the mythos phase. We're going to advance the omen. Then we have to do the reckoning and then spawn another gate. We'll move that omen tracker to the blue omen. And we have two blue gates. So we're going to have to increase doom by two. This will mean we have to draw a devastation card as well. What city is getting destroyed this time? We have meteor showers. The fire above you illuminates the entire night sky. For a moment, the display is beautiful. Then the large stone crater the landscape like a wrath of God. Determine a random space. Okay, we'll grab from over here from our clues. And our random space is San Francisco. Uh, we have here each investigator on that space or an adjacent space loses two health and two sanity. Repeat this process four additional times. So uh, four additional, that's five times. So one, two, Antarctica. I don't know. How does that work with the space around? I don't think that will work. Three and then four, location six. And the final one over here is five. That will be the frozen waste. San Francisco, we're all safe. We've got a space here, 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 and here. That won't hit anyone. London, we're safe. That won't hit anyone. Antarctica is only connected to two locations, and no one's in any of those, so we're good there. Location 6 is here, and adjacent locations, uh, no one is there. Oh, but this last one is going to hit Lily, because Lily is in the frozen waste. This will mean she'll go down to two health and one sanity. Ouch. Now we'll activate the Reckoning, starting with the monsters. This one says, roll a die on a one or a two. The nearest investigator gains a cursed condition. Actually, I think we have two of those out, so we'll have to roll a die twice. Uh, where is that one? Here it is. It's the Warlock and Tanguska, so we're going to have to deal with that one. What does the zombie do? Uh, spawn the zombie horde epic monster on this space if you do discard this monster. <laughs> So we're going to have to do that one. And then we have the serpent people over here. Roll a die on a one or two. The nearest investigator moves one space towards this monster. Oh my gosh. So many effects that are happening. So these ones we're all going to have to roll dice with. Uh, this one we're going to discard and put out the epic zombies. The epic zombie horde will be here. We'll roll for all three of these monsters. Let's start with this one with the cursed condition. I don't want a one or a two. I've got a three. We're good. This one is a cursed condition. We're going to roll. That's a three. We're good. This one is about moving one of the investigators. We rolled a five. We're good. None of those will activate. 
I'm realizing if we had rolled a 1 or a 2 for that serpent, that would have pulled Agnes out of her space and we wouldn't be able to finish the game. So that was lucky. Okay, we're going to do this uh, effect here now for the Ancient One. Each investigator gains a hypothermia condition unless they spend a focus. We have a focus from Lily, a focus from Agnes, and a blank focus from Ursula, but that will work. Don't have to worry about that. Next, we have discard this card and place the top four cards of the asset deck in the reserve. So now the reserve is open to us again. Finally, we'll do the reckoning of all of the different cards that we have under our control, starting with Agnes. So we have our cursed here. We need a four, five, or six to get rid of that. Yes, we are no longer cursed. We have our dark pact. We don't want a one. We don't want a one. Oh, that was a two. We're good. All right, that was Agnes. Now we're going to move to uh, Lily. Lily has a dark pact as well. Let's see. She has a one. We have one of the thousand. The chanting reaches a fever pitch. The cult leader places a ritual dagger in your hand and tells you, the time has come. You must pay the blood you owe to the children of the black goat. Another investigator of your choice is devoured. <gasps> Another investigator of your choice? Well, we're going to choose Ursula. Ursula just was devoured. If we chose Agnes, we wouldn't be able to win the game. <laughs> so Ursula just dies. That means we're going to advance the doom as well. Whenever an investigator is killed, now it says devoured. What that means is that you don't get to lay the character on its side and you can actually pick up items and interact with them. When they're devoured, they're gone. Well, Lily just killed Ursula. Hopefully that does not happen in Arkham Horror, the card game. <laughs> Next, we'll do our leg injury. Oh, we need to test. I'm not just rolling one die. We need to test our strength. Our strength is four plus uh, two. That's six. So I've got four dice here. All I need is a success. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're totally good. If we fail, we'd have to flip that. And then finally, with poisoned, we just simply lose a health. We have one health left. We'll advance Doom once more because Lily just killed Ursula with that dark pact. We'll then spawn a gate and we'll put a monster at it, the Plateau of Lang. And our monster we have, what is this called? The Yithian. These sudden thunderstorms have grown more common. Twice a day, rain that smells like seawater flows the streets and cold winds that cut like glass threaten to pull doors off their hinges. The Bermuda Triangle. Each investigator rolls one die. On a one or two, she becomes uh, she moves to space eight and becomes delayed. So if Agnes rolls a one or a two, we cannot finish the game. If she doesn't, we win the game. <laughs> uh, for Lily, uh, we'll just roll. doesn't even matter. And Ursula, she's not even playing. What technically would happen is this next turn, we'd pick a new investigator. So if Agnes rolls a one or a two, we'll be choosing a new investigator to play. Agnes has had terrible luck to this point. I'm not even going to look. What is it? It's a four. Yes, we do not get delayed. We do not move. For Lily, now Lily can be delayed and she'll move to space eight. Who cares? <laughs> That's what she gets for taking out Ursula. At the end of the mythos phase, each investigator on a space containing an Eldritch token may discard one provision's unique asset and spend one clue to place that Eldritch token on this card. So... We have our provision here. Uh, Agnes is in the correct location. We'll put this here. We'll discard that one clue that we took so dang long to find. And now that we have two on these, we have solved the mystery. We're at the end of the mythos phase. And that means we won the game. Now, was that fun or was that a heck of a lot of fun? <laughs> I cannot believe how much fun I had. I think going forward, though, I will not play with easy ones at the beginning. It made the beginning too easy. I want a little more. I wanted to challenge like this throughout the whole game, just barely hanging on. Um, and I think that that's my fault for trying the different mythos. Let me know how you set up your mythos deck. Do you just do it randomly or do you put in seed in maybe normals at the beginning, hard in the middle? I don't know. Let me know how you set it up. And I, I, I think I'm going to try another one. What I'd love to do is there's a fan made campaign where you can do five or six of the ancient ones back to back. I'd really like to do that. And then each one that you use, you'll use a different sideboard, different preludes. I think that that would just be so much fun. So let me know what you think about that. Let me know how you set up your Mythos deck. Tell me if I made any mistakes. If you're still with me, you're amazing. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope to catch you in some of our other playthroughs. Check out that Arkham Horror LCG playthrough if you want to see Ursula and Lily hopefully not devouring each other, <laughs> but uh, still having fun in Antarctica. 
I'll catch you at the next stop.